Johnny Rock Show. Rockin' 101, The Rock Station. The Johnny Rock Show. You're live on the air. Please don't swear. Is this Melissa Gilbert? It is, and I promise I won't swear. Oh, well, for you, we'll make an exception. How you doing, young lady? I'm doing great. How are you? And thank you for saying young. Oh, hey, of course. Uh, we're doing much better now that you're here. It's people like you that make a week like this at least uh, tolerable. How's that? Welcome to the show. I'll do my best. It is a it is a very difficult week um, for all of us, but um, I'm 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 happy to provide a moment of a break from everything going on and, and to talk about my life and my book and to share all that stuff with you. So maybe we can heal people's hearts a little bit today oh, and give them a break. How sweet. Okay, you got a new book, Back to the Prairie. Now, I was touching on this, and you, you can correct me. People don't know you're a, an actress, an author, but weren't you also like the head of the Screen Actors Guild or you were some big wig mover and shaker at that level in Hollywood, right? Yes, yes. I was the president of Screen Actors Guild for two terms. I was also uh, the Democratic nominee for Congress in Michigan's eighth district in 2016. So, yeah, I'm a very, I'm a very serious person who happens to be very not serious. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, this book looks fascinating. Uh, you know, you're uh, you're calling. St. Cloud, Minnesota. I can see uh, Walnut Grove from our studio window here. Almost. Of course. Yeah. Of course you can. And here I am talking about being back to the prairie and all things prairie and my house in the woods of, of upstate New York and the Catskills and, and um, this extraordinary, wonderful, peaceful life that I found um, that I, I grew up pretending to have. Right. Well, good point. So you uh, you get in this rustic house, they say, and then the pandemic hits and you're really in that house. Yeah, well, rustic is an understatement. Um, you know, my husband and I are uh, we, we had a budget when we were looking for a place upstate. We moved to New York City for work and we found this really run down cabin full of other people's stuff that had been sitting there for decades. But the land was gorgeous and the place had great bones and we thought we can make this a home. And we set about doing just that and it was ready for us to really move in comfortably around Thanksgiving, Christmas mostly, 2019. And so when March 13th, 2020 rolled around, we went up there and didn't leave. And it has become our primary residence, our home. We learned how to DIY all kinds of stuff. We built a garden. We built a chicken coop by ourselves. We raised chickens. We raised our own vegetables. Um, this year, we're doing demolition on our deck, and we're learning how to build a deck ourselves. And, and it is the most extraordinary thing for us to be in this place where we get to nurture this home that has provided so much nurturing and a safe place for us. Wow. That's great. Now, you were born and raised in Los Angeles, so this lifestyle, it's got to be somewhat of a change, yes? But absolutely, 100%. First of all, I had to I had to get out of Los Angeles ultimately because there's no such thing as a 50-year-old ingenue. And they kept <laughs> making me think that it was possible, and I just wanted to age somewhere. So when I met Tim Busfield, the, my darling, wonderful husband, he was living in Michigan at the time. So that's where we lived for five years before we moved to New York. Um, but, yeah, I grew up my whole life in Los Angeles. I say, my husband says in the book, the closest thing I got to growing a tomato was picking a tomato at the local grocery store for my bagel. <laughs> wow. Hope you had some locks on there, Booby. Well, that's amazing. 100%. <laughs> I am a nice Jewish girl from Encino. I know from La. <laughs> you know from La. Okay, now, Little House on the Prairie ran from 1974 to 1983. I always wanted to do this joke on you. Uh, uh, hey, sorry about your sister uh, and her blindness. No, that's a inside Little House on the Prairie joke. Uh, your sister on the show went blind, correct? Yes, that's true. And yes, it, I, I thank you. I appreciate your condolences. It was <laughs> very hard on the whole family. Oh, my God. You know, I watched... Um, on uh it was like uh amazon prime it, uh, an old movie made for tv movie about michael landon and i learned so much about the guy i had no idea 
it was actually uh, for a TV movie. It was very well done. Was it okay working with the guy? Because in this movie, he had a little bit of a temper, but never towards the kids on the uh, on the crew, on the staff, on the on the show. One hundred percent. We rarely saw a temper on the set. I mean, rarely. And the only time his temper would flare on our set, and never towards the kids, by the way, was if somebody was not prepared or didn't do their job one hundred percent professionally, which is completely legitimate. It was never. He never lashed out for no reason he always had a good reason to be angry and his temper was not out of control by any stretch of the imagination um i adored working with him he is one of the great mentors of my life he was like a a second father to me and so much so that my youngest son is named michael so you know i um but he, he was a human being just like we all are with flaws and foibles and issues and and all kinds of stuff in his life. But, you know, he'd be the first one to tell you he was not perfect. But he certainly tried to be the best Michael Landon he could be. Oh, that's great. Yeah, he, he seemed like a real professional and worked his butt off his entire life. And uh, his son had some issues. But actually, the movie was done by his his son. I think he directed it or wrote it. But uh, in the end, uh, his son... Yeah was just fine well that's great to hear and you seem like you're well adjusted how did you uh how did you not become one of those child actors that we hear about and all the horrific stories when they grow up well first of all boy do i have you fooled Um, (laughs) (laughs) you know what i attributed it i attribute it to really good parenting and great mentoring um i think one of the, the 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 biggest problem child actors have who 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 go through those issues and have problems later in life or you know even as kids it's not the industry it's the parents really the responsibility lies at the foot of the parents and the people who are raising them um and i had some really solid parenting and mentorship and people looking out for me at all times in all ways so it was it was uh, a real gift to have those people around to help keep me centered and grounded you know, as as things got crazy in my childhood. Well, look at you. You've done it all. I've got to uh, spend my weekend reading this new book from you. Unbelievable. Because you wouldn't believe some of it, but uh, if it's from you, I believe it all. Back to the Prairie, Melissa oh. Gilbert. It's 100% true. If you read the foreword written by my husband, he'll tell you. He he read the book to make sure I didn't make anything up, and it is 100% <laughs> true. Uh, you're a pro. Hey, have a great, safe uh, three-day weekend coming up here out on the prairie. And uh, come on back to the Johnny Rock Show anytime, Melissa Gilbert, okay? Uh, thanks so much. I will. All right. There she goes. Have a bagel. Wow. Oh, hello. Well, uh, see? I thought that was going to go a lot worse. I didn't. Uh, I didn't dare uh, broach the subject of uh, Rob Lowe. She used to date Rob Lowe. I think it was during that time he was like getting caught at Democratic convention in that threesome. I think I wouldn't go there though. She's too sweet. Johnny Rock Show in the morning. The Rock Station every day. Rockin' what?